What's good, crime family? Hope you're having a good day today. If not, I hope this video I'll bring a little light to your day. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we're checking out why Gordon Ramsay is always angry. Let's get straight into it. Because of shows like Kitchen Nightmares and Hell's Kitchen, we know that Gordon Ramsay is kind of a jerk. Get out of my way. Get out of my f***ing way. Get out of my f***ing way. Get out of my way! I'm not in your way! Many people attribute Gordon's antics to a fake persona that he displays for entertainment. It's just a character, they say. However, when you consider the violent and abusive life Gordon had to endure, you will understand where his rage comes from. Gordon's father, Gordon Ramsay Sr., was a violent alcoholic who Ramsay described as a hard-drinking womanizer. When his father was drunk, he'd either hit the children or throw things around the house. We had oh to goodness. run for our lives, he recalled. We spent many nights, weekends, hidden in the Department of Health and Social Security rooms. Although his father abused and neglected his children, his mother Helen suffered the most. She was beaten relentlessly, even when oh she was seven months goodness, pregnant bro. with Gordon's younger sister. Gordon and his siblings, Diane, Ronnie, and Yvonne, often sat cowering upstairs in their bedrooms while their mother was subjected to physical abuse downstairs. She often feared one day he might kill her. Gordon was already bigger than his father by the age of 12, but he never fought back. I don't know if I could ever have hit him. We were never big or strong enough to stop him. He had power over all of us. The crazy part is, the kids often spent time in child protective services. Police would take their father away during his outbursts, but it was only temporary as they would eventually return under the same roof as him. They could not escape. To make matters worse, Gordon's father didn't even support the family financially. His mother was a career nurse, and his father just worked various dead-end jobs. Dad would often have a fallout with someone at work and get fired, and because our home often came with his job, we would become homeless and have to move again. The family lived in roughly 16 different homes across England before settling in Warwickshire. As you can imagine, Gordon's education was negatively impacted due to his father's terrorizing presence. Yo. It's wild that he grew up in just like a, such a a difficult way, you know, dealing with a father who's abusive in the family, man. That definitely, I'm pretty sure that definitely can affect anybody, you know, growing up and have an outlook on how they're going to be in life, man. But wow, that's crazy. However, he found a positive outlet detached from his home life through football. He was aggressive on the field and could sprint really fast. Oh, he played football? spot on the Rangers football club youth team. Gordon claims that he was scouted at one of his games by an Oxford United manager, which led him to being signed to the team, but an Oxford spokesman says otherwise. We don't have concrete evidence that he ever played for Oxford United, and none of those coaches around that time can remember him playing for us. This oh, seems wow. like a strange thing for Gordon to lie about, but nevertheless, football was a major passion of his. Yeah, why would he lie about that? It was also around that. this time that lied. Gordon was finally able to flee his father's abuse for good. His mother told Gordon and his sister Diane that tension in their relationship was worse than ever. She forced them to move out of the house for their own safety. At age 16, Gordon and Diane moved out and got their own flat to Together in Banbury, located in Oxfordshire, Southeast England. But at age 19, Gordon's dreams of being a football player were destroyed, which was the best thing that would ever happen to him. After suffering a serious knee injury, Gordon enrolled at North Oxfordshire Technical College to study hotel management. During this time, he worked as a commie chef at the Roxton House Hotel. The commie chef, otherwise known as a junior chef, is at the bottom of the food chain, literally. Most kitchen brigades are organized similarly to the military. Auguste Escoffier is credited for coming up with this hierarchy system while serving as a cook in the French military in the 1800s. Kami chefs help ensure that a kitchen's operations run smoothly. They perform cooking, cleaning, delivery, and other support duties as instructed by the chef de partie. After wow. progressing through the- See, this is the perfect e example of just because one door closes, don't mean it's the end. Just because, you know, one dream is shut down, don't mean something else even better is not going to come along. That's why you never give up on, you know, achieving greatness. the ranks and becoming the sous chef, Gordon ran the kitchen and 70 seat dining room at the Wickham Arms until he started a sexual relationship with the owner's wife. I slept with Wait a minute. Because she uh, made, Bro? A, you know, uh, a go for me. I mean, I, trust me, I mean, what 19 year old chef, you know, fit as a fiddle, is going to say no. <laughs> 
to a stunning 33 year old wife of your boss so wait a minute got fired However, i would have definitely probably said no what <laughs> restaurant and his first appearance on television Michelin stars are basically the highest badges of honor for restaurants. The stars are part of the Michelin Guide, which employs thousands of inspectors who travel around the world sampling the finest cuisine. These highly trained inspectors will visit hundreds of restaurants a year in order to identify the best of the best. Michelin inspectors are always anonymous to ensure they don't receive preferential treatment during their meals. Inspectors book, dine, and pay for their meals in the same way as an average guest. Once each restaurant in consideration has been inspected, the Michelin Guide director meets with the worldwide teams for what is called star sessions where the rating of each restaurant is debated. These sessions often last days, with each establishment considered one by one until a unanimous decision is reached. Restaurants oh, wow. can earn a maximum of three stars. Michelin quantifies one star as being high quality cooking worth a stop, two stars for excellent cooking worth a detour, and finally, the prestigious three stars represent exceptional cuisine I mean, guess they worth got three. a special journey. Ramsey honed his culinary skills at Harvey's in Wandsworth. This is where a legend was created. The executive chef at Harvey's was Marco Pierre White, who is not only world class, but also considered to be the first celebrity chef. Marco has been rumored to have somewhat of a temper. He has admitted that sometimes he shouts and screams in the kitchen. Gordon says that Marco was brutal, allegedly one night even making a young Gordon Ramsay cry. However, this side of him is rarely seen when the cameras are on. On TV, he's more of an intense savage that struck fear into you without saying or doing too much. No, I didn't make Gordon Ramsay cry. He made himself cry. That was his choice to cry. After working at Harvey's for three Damn, years, Ramsey became more equipped to handle the fast-paced and high-pressure trade of fine dining. He also probably learned that sometimes to run a kitchen, you need to be aggressive, loud, and dominant. The 1988 documentary Marco shows a behind-the-scenes look. So this is where you get his anger from. Well, not really anger, but like he said, being dominant in the kitchen to make sure everything goes the right way. Look at the chaotic life in the kitchen. Gordon is seen multiple times throughout the documentary, calm, listening, learning, and getting a taste for what it was like to be on the big screen. Sadly, his family was still suffering. Gordon's sister Diane decided to return home to live with their parents. One day, their father threw scalding hot milk over their mother, who was in bed, punching oh and dragging gosh. her downstairs. Diane got her mother to the hospital, where they were referred to Women's Aid, a charity in the United Kingdom aimed at ending domestic violence against women and children. The pair found refuge in one of the charity's shelters for six months and got help sorting out Helen's benefits. Her husband so had never sad, given man. her any money, likely a tactic he used to ensure she would never leave. Helen and Diane went home to find the flat ransacked and a postcard on the mantelpiece warning, one night when you're least expecting it, I'll come back and finish you all off. Wait that a minute. Onward, the Ramsey family was finally free of Gordon James Sr. Jesus. By his mid-twenties, Gordon had already built a resume that would land him jobs working alongside world-class chefs in France and then as head chef at La Tante Claire in Chelsea, a three Michelin star restaurant. However, Marco White would present something that would stamp Gordon's legacy permanently. In 1990, Marco offered Gordon a head chef position and a 10% share in the Rossmore. The restaurant was renamed Aubergine and achieved Michelin star status 14 months later. Gordon's mm. cooking was so highly sought after that the restaurant had a waiting list of up to six months and bills averaging about 75 Jesus. euros per person. By Imagine waiting six months for a reservation, bro. Like some restaurants for. <laughs> God dang. In 1997, Aubergine won its second Michelin star. Despite the restaurant's success, a dispute began between Ramsey and the business owners, who wanted to expand and turn Aubergine into a chain restaurant. Gordon didn't feel he could duplicate his cooking as a formulaic concept like most chain restaurants do. After many years of disagreements and legal battles, Ramsey announced his departure and handed in his notice. The entire staff at the restaurant followed Gordon and participated in a walkout. Ramsey later referred to it as Black Friday. He described the decision to set out on his own as the most important day of my entire cooking career, the most important decision of my life. Gordon decided to purchase and open his own restaurant. See this? See when the money come in, that's when you find out who really gonna be there for you. 
or who's really going to switch up on you because it, it seems like as soon as the money started coming in that's when you know things got a little shaky between them you know called restaurant gordon ramsay in chelsea in 1998 the journey of opening his business venture paired with a television documentary series called boiling point the series only had five episodes but gave viewers a raw behind the scenes look at ramsay and his element along with his cooking methods and expertise he tried to impress food critics in hopes of a third michelin star although the series was short-lived ramsay's vulgar language and hostile nature were on full display and he quickly became known for his loud mouth and short temper in the kitchen. This guy got fired for drinking water. Standing in front of the fucking glass, drinking fucking water. In front of all the customers. Fuck off. <laughs> That's kind of cold. Definitely drink with water. With these explosive moments, it still Holy. feels tame compared to what would come many years later. After this establishing is... his first restaurant, Ramsay expanded and opened several restaurants across the United Kingdom. He earned his third Michelin star in 2001, making him the first Scottish chef to achieve the feat and securing him a lifelong legacy at the age of 35. His second TV show it. portrayed Gordon in a much more genuine and humble way. Ramsay's Kitchen Nightmares was a 2004 show where Gordon visited failing restaurants and helped to improve the establishments in just one week. He then revisited the restaurants months later to see how each business fared in his absence. Kitchen Nightmares was a huge commercial hit. Ramsay initially came off as quite relatable. He was very candid, but still supportive in a positive manner and genuinely wanted to see businesses succeed. He used his time wisely, learning the staff's strengths and weaknesses and the town's culture surrounding each restaurant. He also used collective plural pronouns like we when describing each restaurant and what needs to be done, fully integrating himself as a part of the team and part of the solution, not merely operating as an onlooker giving directions. This Ramsay made for far more compelling television and left oh. viewers excited about the food and entrepreneurship. The more poise and calculated attitude carried on to his next televised culinary show. So he learned the game from Michelin, I think that's his name, and took it and, and built his own empire. I love to see that. You know, you learn from the best, you take that, you take what you learn and you build your own. Like, Hell's Love Kitchen it. UK. The show created a competition between two kitchens featuring 10 aspiring chefs competing for a prize of 250,000 euros, money that the winner could use to start his or her own restaurant. They were split into two teams of six, one celebrity chef along with five members. And just look at the difference. Now what are we gonna do? Right, can we taste now please? <laughs> He's, He's so brutal kitchen. in the kitchen, man. It's the worst risotto. Oh man, I give up. That is shocking. No, I'm trying. <laughs> My hardest chef. Fuck. Oh, man. What? <laughs> Gordon Ramsay smiling? Success, Gordon worked with the Fox Network to produce an American version with the same name. First premiering in 2005, Hell's Kitchen US followed a different format. This is where Gordon's asshole persona was formed. Move your ass! He jumped up and f***ed up. Now f*** off back on your section. Why? Because I'm not a quitter. You're not a quitter. You're not a f***ing cook either. Move your fat ass. You donkey! Hey! You're f***ing useless, you know that. You're cooking in a burnt pan, you the US version of Hell's Kitchen surpassed the UK version in popularity. The show was significantly more dramatic than any of Gordon's UK shows, with the addition of loud sound effects, dramatic music, rapid jump cuts, and exaggerated drama. You're special. People love drama, people love chaos. That's the crazy thing about it. He may not be as, you know, turned up, you know, on camera as he shows on TV. I feel like he's a lot more laid back, but I'm pretty sure he still has a dominant uh, persona in the kitchen. That's because you probably have to, but I'm pretty sure, but for his TV show, especially like based in the USA, it's definitely uh, a more exaggerated version of him because that's gonna sell. People people love to see stuff like that, you know? <laughs> I've now become not very special, thanks to big face there. Hurry up, Giovanni. Yeah, but I'm not this face yet. Yeah, say that again. I said, uh -oh. I'm not dick face, yeah, you're chef. pissed, are you? I'm not look at me, look at me, eyes! Not as pissed as I am! You fucking are! Donkey! It became so excessive that people online started accusing the producers of staging fake drama for more entertaining television. He people also claimed that the editors use editing techniques to make certain contestants appear as poor performers to justify their elimination later. The most obvious example was the case of Amanda Tech Moore, who you can clearly see cooking here, but the only problem is that she was eliminated three episodes earlier. Essentially, they are using old footage of contestants, for example, Gordon yelling at someone in episode one, to justify their elimination in 
in episode 10, even if they didn't do anything wrong that day, since the show is not premiering live and viewers wouldn't be able to notice the difference. Another major controversy in regards to the show being staged occurred yeah, when did that with a lot of Joseph shows, Tinley man. from season 6 during one elimination round angrily confronted Ramsey, challenging him to a fight before being escorted off the set. You want a f***ing jacket? <laughs> Let's go step outside. You said enough is enough. The incident drew criticism from viewers suggesting the scene was potentially fake and conducted to add more drama and tension to the show to increase viewer interest. However, it was this tumultuous persona that may have ruined his UK television presence. Okay, this was asked for well done, and this person is sending it back. And let me just tell you something. You know, in terms of well done, look, we praised it. What is that? That's well done. That is well done, so... Oh, what, about, shit? what about this, Gordon? That is well done! What about this? It's well done! Without the added sound effects and intense music, Gordon's screaming looks less performative, which made viewers think he was actually just a jerk. But the USA audience couldn't get enough of Gordon. He was a rock star. He worked with the Fox Network again to produce an American version of Kitchen Nightmares. First premiering in 2007, Kitchen Nightmares US followed the exact blueprint as the original, as the owners invited Gordon to spend a week with a failing restaurant to revive the business. However, like the US version of Hell's Kitchen, Kitchen Nightmares was more dramatized and featured Ramsey displaying a visibly short temper, regularly yelling profanities and insulting his staff. Gordon once even said the F word 298 times in just two episodes. When you saw Bro. those two kitchen nightmares Are you okay? into one, last year when they had those what? 298 fucks, I wasn't proud of that. There has come a time when, at the age of 43, I'm getting a bit tired of the foul-mouthed bully chef. In that yeah. same interview, Ramsey was adamant in his refusal to pander to elderly British viewers by trying to act like anyone other than himself. So on one on one hand, he admits he isn't proud of his excessive outbursts. On the other, he isn't just gonna act like a proper lad to please his UK audience. Plus, in 2017, he came out mm. with a show called The F Word, so I don't think he really cares that much. Maybe he was actually like that. I don't know. I, I just, I don't know. Both versions of Kitchen Nightmares produced seven seasons and were canceled collectively in 2014. As of September Damn. 2021, Ramsey has accumulated a net worth estimated to be around $220 Sheesh. million, dollars, with an estimated salary of 225000 per episode. Gordon typically earns roughly $45 million per year from his media and restaurant business. His shows account for more than 75 hours of programming and more than $150 million in ad sales for Fox. With restaurants in the UK, US, France, Italy, China, South Korea, and Qatar, his empire has expanded on a global scale. Evidently, being a dickhead pays pretty well. But Gordon is also <laughs> able to act like kinda, this because kinda. he started at I the mean, very yes. bottom and grinded for decades mastering his craft. These days, you could see him on TikTok telling people how terrible their cooking is. Whether his rage comes from his father's abuse or from the perspective of a passionate teacher wanting his pupils to learn, it never gets old seeing Gordon Ramsay absolutely destroy someone's cooking. <laughs> yeah, man. Shout out to Gordon Ramsay, man. I watched a clip video of his one time and I was like, bro, what in the world is going on? But hey, it's Gordon Ramsay, you know? <laughs> but I hope you enjoyed my reaction video, man. Shout out to Patrick CC. Original video link in the description. And we out.